Bloodseeker's Aghanim Scepter upgrade grants a new ability called Blood Mist. Blood Mist does three main things. Damages Bloodseeker, damages and slows enemies around Bloodseeker, and gives Bloodseeker a universal damage barrier. Let's break down how these mechanics actually work, some additional things Blood Mist does, and how to best use it. Blood Mist can be toggled on and off. When toggled on, you need to wait 3 seconds to turn it off. We'll go more over this aspect of it later and how it might affect your usage of it. Blood Mist damages and slows enemies around Bloodseeker at the cost of his own health. Blood Mist inflicts damage equal to 7% of the max HP per second of the affected unit. This means Bloodseeker takes damage based on his own max HP, while each enemy within the 450 radius takes damage based on their respective max HPs. Against an enemy with high max HP, like a tanky offlaner, it'll do a lot more damage to them. Against a squishy support, not so much. It deals damage in 0.1 second intervals, starting immediately upon being toggled on. Toggling on does not interrupt channeling, so you could use it while TPing. The damage from Blood Mist is not lethal to Bloodseeker, but it can kill enemies, and that's a big part of this spell. You know how when Bloodseeker kills a unit, he gets some HP back? That is thanks to his passive Thirst ability. If you have Aghanim Scepter, which gives Blood Mist, any overhealing you get from instant heal sources like Thirst is turned into a universal damage barrier that decays at a rate of 0.5% per second. Having Blood Mist active also increases Thirst's healing by 50%. Pretty unique. And if you're wondering about how damage barriers work, check out this video I made that goes over everything you need to know about them, including the different types and priorities that they have. It also works for healing from normal lifesteal, spell lifesteal, and even things like mech. Mech heals for 275. If I'm already full health, then use mech, that 275 heal will be turned into a damage barrier. It's hard to see it at the full 275 since it starts decaying instantly. The damage barrier can only go as high as 50% of Bloodseeker's max HP. This damage barrier helps to account for probably one of the biggest gripes people have with this spell. It does a lot of damage to yourself. Remember earlier when I mentioned that if you toggle Blood Mist on, you have to wait 3 seconds to toggle it back off? Well, since Blood Mist damages for 7% of your max HP per second, that means in that 3 second time window, you're dealing 21% of your max HP as damage to yourself. Pretty tough, but a bit more manageable since the self damage will be taken from the universal damage barrier first before your actual HP. And having Blood Mist active increases Thirst's healing. Still, you need to be very careful about when you're actually using Blood Mist. But one good thing is that you don't need it to be active to get the damage barrier from any overhealing you get. That will always happen once you have the Aghanim Scepter upgrade. Here are a few ways you can use Blood Mist without bringing yourself too low. As mentioned before, build up your universal damage barrier first. This could be from killing heroes, a creep wave, or a neutral camp. Once you have a bit of barrier built up, you can much more comfortably use Blood Mist. Blood Mist does magic damage, so if you happen to get a magic damage barrier applied to you with something like a Glimmer or a Pipe, or a universal damage barrier from something like Abaddon's Shield or a Shield Rune, Blood Mist will chip away at those barriers first before your HP. This also means using BKB will negate most of the self damage that Blood Mist does, so pop BKB, pop Blood Mist, and go crazy. On the note of Blood Mist doing magic damage, that means the damage it does can be buffed by Blood Rage, since that gives spell amp. Similar to Blood Mist, Blood Rage depletes the HP of the targeted unit each second. However, unlike the self damage from Blood Mist, the damage dealt from Blood Rage is not absorbed by damage barriers. Keep this in mind, especially if you're relying on a barrier to block the damage the same way it does for Blood Mist. If you pick up Bloodstone, you'll get 30% more spell lifesteal, and even increase the AoE of Blood Mist by 75. Pairing that with the spell amp from Blood Rage, you can find yourself doing more damage to enemies than to yourself, meaning your damage barrier will only go up. Maybe this is the answer to the self-damage issue people have with this spell. What do you think? Mastering Bloodseeker involves a delicate balance of leveraging your own health for greater offensive power. This playstyle, especially with the use of abilities like Blood Mist, requires a keen understanding of your limits and the right timing to poke in or out of a fight. This is something that often takes many games to get used to, but in the meantime, at least now you know how Bloodseeker's Blood Mist actually works. If you have any other notes or strategies around it that I missed, be sure to let all of us know in the comments so we can all get better. If you have any suggestions for a spell or mechanic that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments or hop on my Discord and let me know there. 
I've also been streaming a lot more recently, so go follow me on Twitch and hop in to say hi if you see me live. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.